Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Hello. I'm Uwe Schall. I'm a designer from Germany. I live currently in China. And I want to talk to you about plastic. About plastic and how to avoid it and replace it by other things. As a species, we are addicted to plastic since the 50s. We invented it with a good reason, with good intent, and it really helped society to have, uh, like, extend the life, uh, have more hygiene, because you use it in hospitals, and plastic absolutely makes sense. Also as food packaging, you cannot use wood for everything, so it did make sense in some places. But I have the impression it somehow got out of control. Um, plastic is everywhere. We use it too much, too often. There's no real solution for recycling. There's no solution for uh, separating it and even production. We can increase and make our system more efficient. If we look at the numbers, they are quite horrible. 8 million tons of plastic land in the ocean every year. And it doesn't look like it will change soon. I am a creative, I'm a designer from the shoe industry. So I make an example with textile and footwear. Sometimes you cannot avoid plastic. The problem is, actually it starts with me. I get a briefing, our company wants to do a product, we produce it and we sell it to you. You are the consumers. So I have no choice, you have no choice. And in the end, we blame you for buying these things. And then some companies invent some more expensive ones as an alternative. And then we expect you to buy those. If you have a family, if you have kids, you might not afford it. So it all starts with me as a designer, as a creative, as a company, as a brand. And we need to give options to you. We need to find a solution for plastic, and I think we did. It is here since 300 million years, by the way. And I want to do what I couldn't do in a corporate world. I started my own design studio, and now I will make products which give you options. Not just one, maybe three, maybe four. So what is the solution? I guess you know it. Hey, where is, okay, so here, I have something for you. I have 10 straws and I need one person, just short. Okay, 10 straws, okay. take nine please, sure. nine of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, three, seven, four. nine, throw them on the floor. Usually we do this at night, you know, like we let the garbage somewhere disappear, but yeah, this is actually what happens. And eat this one. No, it's okay. So, thank you very much. 90% of plastic gets not recycled. Oh, just leave it there, I will take it. It's okay. 90% of plastic does not get recycled, can you imagine? It lands somewhere in the landfill, or it gets it get burned or, or just, just disappears somewhere, mostly in the ocean. And we eat five grams of plastic every day. Every week, sorry. Five grams. That's the equivalent of a cup or a credit card because plastic breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. And it's in the water, it's in the animals, it's in the air sometimes. And five grams per week. These are chemicals which are harmful for the body. If you look at this, 35% of microplastic comes from washing, washing our clothes. 60% of clothes have polyester, and that's in most of the clothes. We wash them, and it's so tiny, you don't, you don't even see it. It goes in the water, in the food chain, and back into our food. So what's the solution? Algaes. Plastic is made of oil. Uh, fossil fuel, fossil oil, petroleum, and because of its chemicals, uh, you cannot biodegrade it. Actually, oil is 300 million years old. 
algaes, which were in the ground. But now we can use these. We can make oil from this, we can make plastic, we can make everything we can make from oil, from algaes. The good thing is they grow very fast, they don't need much water, they don't waste, they waste about 10% of water compared to agriculture. They don't need space, not much. So algaes come in different size, very tiny ones. That's the green water, just a few cells called microalgae, up to very huge ones like kelp and seaweed. So we can use these now, actually, because it will fully replace fossil fuel. You can make plastic very easily. Everything you can make from petroleum, you can make from algae or any plant-based oil. So you see how a bottle biodegrades in weeks or months or year. You can make biodegradable plastic which degrades by 100 degrees Celsius. So you burn it in the ground, it will not biodegrade. So this is useful for hospitals, for example. It will not just disappear after a few weeks. Just when you heat it up to a certain degree. Or you just make the one which is like a natural uh, material. It just disappears in nature. Colors is no problem, transparent, no problem. We can use it exactly as oil. So let's take a look. Algaes are the food for the whole marine life. So between algaes and a whale, there's just one species in between. That's this little, little krill, this little, little uh, shrimp, tiny little shrimp. They eat algaes and the whale eats, uh, eats uh, krill. So the food chain is quite short. Also fish eat algaes. All the omega-3 from fish oil is actually not from fish. It comes from algae because fish eat algae. So it's way easier for us to use them even as food because they're a high protein source, omega-3, omega-6. You can use it in cosmetics, as fertilizer, as oil. They bind heavy metals, so you can use it for water treatment. And in wastewater, you have toxins, you have phosphate, nitrate, what they use for a living. So they would get rid of all these chemicals. If we compare land plants with algae, there's 10 times more species in algae. Land plants, about 300,000 algae, 3 million. We use 45,000 species of plants, but just six algae. So there's a lot we can do in the future, and uh, we can use those three million species for our planet. If you see how many trees you need for a person to breathe, it's two to three mature trees, or 40 liters of algae water. That's four buckets. So they grow faster, they make more oxygen. They're actually good for the environment, and they can be used for many things. The most common ones are chlorella and spirulina. So usually they come in powder or tablets, but better is if you have them raw and fresh, which looks like a pesto. So they, I mean, you know algae, so it's just green water, and if you have this at home, it's called a bioreactor. It's a small little fish tank. The water gets greener and greener and thicker and thicker, so you just filter it, and then you can scoop this pesto-looking algae and it's superfood. They use it in space because it creates oxygen. It doesn't need much space and it grows, it really grows fast. And it's one of the most healthy foods. So if we compare agriculture with aquaculture, in the 50s and 60s, it was called the Green Revolution. We used a lot of energy, a lot of fossil fuels and machines to increase production of food. We had to feed more people and we had to have more uh, high, higher production in food. So we reached a kind of peak in 2020 and I think we cannot grow agriculture way more without harming the planet.
because it's already using so much water. Deforestation, animal extinction. I think agriculture is at a peak. It needs to be readdressed because not everything is good there, but we learned. And what we see next is aquaculture or algae. This is just the beginning. If you imagine corn a thousand years ago, this was tiny little fruit, barely, you could barely eat them. So by breeding them and, and make a choice in the selection, we have corn this big. Same for apple, same for every fruit. Imagine, if we do this with algae, in 50 years, we will have a huge, huge potential. And it's here already. So what else can we do with algae? They have a color, not just green. So you can color, you can use them as dye pigments. And that's no chemicals, you can use them right away. Just use them for prints, use them for fabrics. They come in very nice colors. And then medical research. If you want to heal bones, broken bones, or you have a cancer treatment, what they use right now is they experiment with hydrogel, which is a gel, and the, as a filler, and there are micro glass beads, so the bones can go back together. They do this quite well, because these tiny little glass, glass beads, they make the bones grow, actually. The problem is the body will reject it. There's a very high rejection rate. So they're doing research right now. And guess what? There are algae which have a glass shell. There are microalgae, very tiny. If you look under the microscope, they look really beautiful, almost like architecture. And their shell is made of glass. So it's the same as the glass beads. If you replace them with algae, it works the same way and the body doesn't reject it. So it's very promising what's happening there. And remember, we just at the beginning. So what else can we do? As a designer, I would say, let's design some products. So these are tiny little fish tanks, which are green, which, which have a light and glowing, and a green color. So if you grow them at home, it's, it's called a mini bioreactor. It's like a coffee machine. So it gets thicker and thicker. Then you can scoop out the algae and you eat it. Or you can have bigger bioreactors. We will find a more sexy word for this, I guess, in the future. Or why not having a lamp? That lamp creates oxygen all the time. Because algae, they use CO2 and they create oxygen. So imagine you sit at home, do your homework, or your work, or whatever, just relax, and you have constant oxygen. Or in an office, you can have office lamps creating oxygen. So no more boring meetings. It will increase productivity, I'm sure. So algae curtains, that would be a biodegradable plastic with algae running through it. So it's a vertical garden. And you can separate places in your room you can use them in offices. Or my dream, artificial trees filled with algae. So this is a, a fish tank, more or less. And with sunshine and CO2, it would uh, create oxygen. Designing products, this is the point. We need to think differently. We cannot just design them like we do before. There is another way. Actually, nature does this. We can learn from nature. We always say this. And actually, it's so easy. It's just we don't do it. So what does nature do? One thing grows, falls on the ground, it gets eaten, it gets processed, and disappears. And another species will eat it and grow. So it's a circle, including the water, the trees, animals, microbes, fungi, everything. If you see the industry, that is linear. It's not circular. We produce things, they have a life cycle, and at the end, they land in the landfill. Some parts you can recycle, but that's not really from the beginning. That's not the system. So we need to have a circular design approach in everything we do. 
because we have an industry which has a system already, so we know how to change this. It's not hard. So for example, this little sprocket represents a material. For example, copper, plastic, aluminum. A certain type of aluminum should be mixed with other aluminum because they're different. So if you design it from the beginning, that it's put in a part as a resource. After the life cycle, it's taken out, melted, and used again in another product and taken out as a resource. We have to, we have to view materials as resource. So the goods of today become the resource of tomorrow. That circular design, circular economy. So it's not just one thing which saves the planet. By the way, these are made from edible materials. It's not just one thing that saves the planet. It's a combination. So algaes, I mean, it's, it's incredible what they can do. Because they are oil, you can also make fuel. Oil-based, we can use these to make shoes, for example. And we can go directly in the nature circle. So we get the material from nature, we use them as flip-flops, and we directly put them back in nature and compost them. Another example is in architecture. So many parts of the house are just there over the whole life cycle. They don't do anything. I mean, they work, but they could be used in other, with other tasks. So for example, the facade, why not use it as a thin little fish tank filled with algae? You harvest the oil, the oil heats the house, and it's a recycling all the time. So we have enough CO2, so the algaes are happy. We have enough light, they grow, we harvest, we use it to burn it. So this house is in Hamburg, and about one third of the heating is uh, recycled energy from the algae. So if we breed these algae better in 10 years, 20 years, this would be a net zero house. So it's not only food, it's not only agriculture, it's not only oil and plastic. Algae is so much more, even bones. So my vision or my dream is to have a, a mix with plants, with algae, to have innovative things which look high tech, which make a city look forward thinking and look cool. I think that that's a good idea to, to see those, but also plants, green city. So I wish, as a designer, I can contribute something and make your life easier, make your choice easier, and save the planet. Thank you very much.